Uh, Hatia, thank you so much for joining us uh, tonight. Thank you for inviting me. Um, the first question would be about the differences between uh, what you did in Georgia and between the reforms that went through in Georgia and in Ukraine. There are lots of uh, similarities when we're talking about these reforms, but uh, it's, qu it's quite obvious that these countries are very different and the challenges are really different. First of them is the, the number of the policemen even here in Ukraine. What would you say about the differences and the challenges when we're talking uh, about Georgia and Ukraine? This is a question I've been as asking all the time to myself also. So, so what is the main difference? And actually, I don't really much um, uh, like the question because, you know, just Georgian reform, Ukrainian reform, because Georgia is a unique country and Ukraine is a unique country. Because, because we have, I mean, as in countries, I mean, we as Ukraine and Georgians, we absolutely different mentalities and, of course, scales, you know, with geography, because we just huge. So there's a different um, approach. Yeah, absolutely, there's a different approach. Because uh, I, I can say, and I must say, that uh, first of all, there are no copy paste reforms. There are no copy paste before reforms because we can't copy one reform and paste to, to another mm -hmm. country, this reform to another country, because we have to be very careful about the mentality, about the... Uh, about the situation about the uh, history about the past about the about the presence you know just that we have to to be very careful you know and that the uh, looks to the different you know direction so sure. first of all but but i can say that uh, there are some similarities because so first of all reforms are always sensitive why why because you know just uh, they, they they are painful sometimes they are sensitive and uh, they're important and they're important. And the reform of the national police, not reform, you know, just I, I have to correct myself, is like the establishing of the national police of Ukraine. Is a, I think that is a number one priority for the country because police is a backbone for the security, internal mm -hmm. and external security for, for the country. It's important for the country to have very strong, stable, professional and fair police. So I think that uh, step by step, yes, just... Uh, uh, copying some experience, yes, just uh, talking to the people, yes, uh, asking some uh, advices to our partners and strategic partners. I think I think that the step step by step, just that we will be heading to our our just that the main goal. Mm -hmm. I was asking about the numbers because there is a concern that those huge numbers of policemen who might not go through or uh, let's say succeed. Uh, in reattestation, whether the economy or whether the country or society is ready to take those people back into society, whether they will find themselves there. Uh, is, it, is, it a, is it a huge concern? Is it a serious concern? Should we take uh, this into let's account? Let's say in this way that I don't see these people in the risk zone, right? Because mm -hmm. they are not poor people, they are quite rich people. So, and they're the people who are kind of selfish because, you know, just what they did, they did that, uh, uh, they, they did like, you know, just very bad stuff because they changed their life and, they, you know, that their priority was like just to gain and not to be professionals and of course mm -hmm. not to be fair so um but uh, secondly i can say that um, uh the main problem not main problem but the main priority in the task for us will be to change the mentality and to reshuffle the mentality of the police officers you know mm -hmm. i mean militia officers who used who will be appointed on the uh, permanent vacancies mm -hmm. at the National Police of Ukraine to change the mentality. Probably, maybe the person had some problems or uh, mistakes or he used to just uh, think and work in other way because you know that he was a part or she was a part of the system which was corrupted which was bad and which was like you know just acting the way it was acting you know so uh, but the main task for us is that the, to create the new structure a new concept of the modern police officer who will be mm -hmm. caring about people who will be oriented on the community and who will be the core of the community policy Poly, um, community policing in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, if we will be, um, uh, you know, just doing right stuff, I mean, but, well, with problems, with, with some mistakes, but right stuff, I think that uh, we can create the universal police officer with different mind. Mm -hmm. So what will, what happened with the patrol police officers? You know, what is a 
main difference between the patrol police officers and the DAI, if you ask, if you ask a, a just ordinary person in the street, the main difference is that they are just not bribed, you know? Mm -hmm. They are just not taking money. And uh, by the way, we had a wonderful, um, not wonderful, so I was to say, just for me it's wonderful, but we had a very good example in Odessa when patrol police officer was asked to be bribed, but he said that no, and he arrested the man who was just trying to bribe him. You can mm -hmm. you imagine, can you imagine it's happening with the person and, you know, no, it's a wonderful diet. story for me so too. So yeah. we have to create a different mm -hmm. concept and the format and the frames of the patrol uh, of the uh, police officer. I mean, working in the MPU. Is it? Uh, I think it's one of the main questions among um, ourselves as well, because we, as a part of society, are also closely watching these reforms happening. Uh, is it possible to create a transparent structure in a? highly corrupted system overall, uh, while those new officers with new mentality, as you say, know and fully aware of the corruption on the high levels, and they know that it is still there and it is still happening. Is it is it possible to create something like that in a in a overall corrupt system? Everything is possible. You know, there is uh, when we're talking about the possibilities. You know, the, I think that the human being is a, is the most perfect creature on the earth, you know, with a lot of possibilities. So I think that uh, we can make it. We can make it because, you know, just the first of all, we have to create a very transparent and open, you know, society within the national police of Ukraine. So thus, uh, the police can become, how to say, the first train in the row for the country. Mm -hmm. Train. Mm -hmm pointing that, uh, okay, this training is, you know, just made a big, the huge breakthrough, so we can be key, so we can just follow them. I mean, I think that, that this example will be like the, I think it's, it is a role model for me, and I think that the NPU must be the role model for other, mm -hmm. others. The new year is there already. What do you think are the main challenges for you as the head of the National Police in the upcoming year? Well, we will have a lot of challenges, and uh, I don't have some intentions that everything will be smooth, mm -hmm. because uh, first of all, we have to do the very crucial reforms, and I think that, you know, I think, but it's it's important to say, frankly and honestly, that, you know, the 2016 will be crucial for the NPU, for uh, creating the stable situation in the country, create the good concept uh, of the police officers, just with good salaries, good equipment, you know, well equipped, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. with good cars, gasoline and everything. You know, this is a complex we have to think about. And this is a, this is a complex that we have to uh, provide to the police officers in terms of to just demand and request the highest standards, as I said, you know, in the previous interview. So I think that the Yes, there are challenges. I think that uh, there, are mis there will be mistakes, there will be problems. But if you ask me that the why you are so you are confident that everything will be okay, you know, I'm always confident. I'm always confident because we don't have any other way back. We don't have it. Mm -hmm. So uh, all the time, I know for starting my service at the, the, the government of Georgia and, you know, just continuing my service in Ukraine. So there are our countries and there is our country, Ukraine, behind our back. So we can't step up. Mm -hmm. So that's my point. And but very, very, very sure, just I don't, to specify. I don't, I don't to be, you know, just I don't want to be very pathetic, but I think, you know, the talking about the future and talking about, about the future of our kids and our country, I think that, uh, you know, I have a right to be emotional. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.